Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking at God's appointed times. Those appointed times are the feasts of the Lord. Now the feasts of the Lord in Hebrew are known as Moedim. And Moedim means in Hebrew a rehearsal. So the feasts of the Lord are rehearsals. What are they rehearsals for? Well, as you'll see, all the feasts in the Old Testament were rehearsals for the coming of the Messiah, his first coming and his return. We're going to be looking at the spring feasts, which are Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, and then the fall feasts come after the long dry summer. So you have the first feasts, Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, then you have the long hot summer, which many of us would call the church age. And then you go into the fall feasts, the trumpets, repentance, and the Feast of Tabernacles, and Hanukkah. So let's have a look. If you look at Passover and unleavened bread, they relate to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. You remember, he was the lamb sacrificed for the sins of the world. And Passover is when they sacrifice a lamb for the sins of the people. Unleavened bread means there is no sin in the Messiah. So at Passover, the Messiah was crucified and there was no sin found in him. First fruits come soon after Passover or during Passover and they relate to the resurrection because the Messiah was raised from the dead and he is the first fruits of all those who will follow in the resurrection. Then you have Pentecost where the Lord Jesus sent the Holy Spirit on the church. Then you have the long hot summer which many of us would relate to the church age. So we have Passover, unleavened bread, which relates to the coming of the Messiah and he was the fulfillment of all the sacrifices that went before. And unleavened bread, of course, shows that the Messiah himself had no sin in him. First fruits relates to the Messiah's resurrection from the dead. Then Pentecost, when the Lord sent the Holy Spirit upon the church. Then you have the long hot summer and then you go into the fall feasts. Well, the long hot summer, we could relate to the church age. And then we have the second coming of the Messiah and the Feast of Trumpets, which will be the rapture of the church. Then you have the time of repentance, where Israel will recognize the Messiah, Yeshua, as the true Messiah, and they will go into a period of repentance. Then you have the Feast of Tabernacles, and that relates to the Messiah's physical return to the planet, where he will rule for a thousand years before taking us into the eternal state. And then you have Hanukkah. Yeshua cleanses the temple immediately after his return from heaven. So you have tabernacles where the Messiah comes and he rules. And during that time, he cleanses the temple after the rule of the Antichrist. And Hanukkah will be when we celebrate that fact that Messiah has cleansed the temple from the rule of the Antichrist. The fall feasts begin in the month of Tishri and this, I hope, is going to be extremely interesting to you because to me it was so interesting. Let's look at the mystery of the month of Tishri. In Tishri, Israel celebrates the New Year, Feast of Trumpets, better known as Yom Teruah, the day of the blowing, where they blow the trumpets. In the Akkadian language, Tishri means beginning. Now remember that. Tishri means beginning. And they look on it as the beginning of the year. So the Feast of Trumpets. You have the day of the blowing of the trumpets. 
It is a day no one knows. Why is that? Because it has to be introduced by two witnesses. Now you can see where I'm going, can't you? We have two witnesses in the book of Revelation that witness to the world before the Messiah's physical return. Now when reading Messiah Yeshua's words concerning the rapture, it's interesting to note it will be with the sound of a trumpet being blown. He also said it is a day no one knows. Also, the book of Revelation, chapter 9, states that before Yeshua returns, two witnesses will appear. Isaiah 46, verse 10 says, God knows the end from the beginning. Now stay with me on this. Isaiah 46, verse 10 says, God knows the end from the beginning. Now the Hebrew word for beginning is Bereshit. Bereshit. Without the vowels, it reads with the letter Beit, a Resh, a Shin, and a Tav. Or in English, a B, R, Sh, and T. Now, if you reverse better sheet and you move the B and add the vowels, it actually reads something quite interesting. It reads, Betishri, Betishri. And in Hebrew, that means... In Tishri. Now, I'm not asking you to believe what I'm telling you. Do your own research. But let's see this from the start here. God knows the end from the beginning. From Bereshit. The Hebrew word for beginning is Bereshit. Without the vowels, we have the Beit, the Resh, the Shin and the Tav. If we reverse Bereshit and move the B... And add the vowels, it reads Betishri, which means in Tishri. It is a day heralded by two witnesses. Jesus will fulfill the fall feast just as he did the spring feasts. Is God telling us that the rapture will be in the month of Tishri, at the Feast of Trumpets, on a day no one knows? And as I said, it will be a day heralded by two witnesses. The month of beginnings, also known as the seventh month, the beginning of the real seventh millennium, God's great Shabbat. Let's read this again. Jesus will fulfill the fall feasts just as he did the spring feasts. So is God telling us the rapture will be in the month of Tishri, Bitishri, on a day no one knows, a day heralded by two witnesses, just as the Feast of Trumpets has to be heralded by two witnesses, so the Messiah's coming with trumpets has to be heralded by the two witnesses. It is a month of beginnings, also known as the seventh month, the beginning of the real millennium, is that what it is? In Tishri? God's great Shabbat? Does it not seem logical to you folks that if the Messiah fulfilled the first feasts in the same year, wouldn't he fulfill the fall feasts in the same year when he returns? Because God is a God of order, not a God of confusion. Is God telling us something here? Is Tishri, the month of the Feast of Trumpets, also the time of the rapture, the second coming? Here you see the Hebrew alphabet. Now just down the left-hand side column, you will see there are little figures there. At the top you will see something that looks like a bull's head, and so on. These are known as Hebrew pictographs and they relate to what the letter means. In ancient Hebrew, each picture represents a letter. They are called pictographs. So let's look at the pictographs for Tishri. Let's look at Beit, the first letter. The letter Beit means house. The picture for that is a house. But in Hebrew it also means in or at. So in or at the Father's house, and the Tav means 
a cross. Could we say because of the cross? The shin means to eat. So let's say you will eat. And the resh means the leader or the head one. So we could say with the leader, Messiah. So in the Father's house, because of the cross, you will eat with the Messiah. I believe God has a hidden message here for us. He's telling us in Tishri, Bitishri, on a day which no one knows, just as the Messiah said, no one knows the day of his coming, and Tishri, the blowing of the trumpets, is a day no one knows. You will eat with the Messiah in the Father's house. That day is coming soon, folks, and you are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Will it be Betishri, in Tishri, at Tishri, and the Father's house, where you will eat with the Messiah? Will you hear those amazing words? Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little, and I will set you over much. Enter, therefore, into the joy of your master, the Messiah. I pray you'll hear those words. Will you be there? I pray you will. Do you know you can become a believer and a follower in Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, today? 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross for you to take away your sin and my sin. I'm asking you now. Time is running out, my friend. And I'm asking you, will you turn to the Messiah today? Confess to him that you are a sinner, that you are in need of salvation. You need to be forgiven. That is the only way you will enter heaven, through the blood of the Messiah's sacrifice. So I'm asking you to call on him. Admit that you are a sinner. Ask him to forgive you your sins today and come into your life. I pray you will do that, my friends. Prophecy is falling from the pages of the Bible today, which means Messiah is coming soon. And I pray you will be ready and that I will see you there at that feast. Please let us know that you have asked Christ into your life and that you are determined to read your Bible and follow him from this day on. Thanks for watching, my friends. God bless you.